Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I am here to talk about my November wrap up. First, I just want to say thanks to everyone who left comments on my other video where I was talking about being in a reading slump and a video making slump and just having a hard time with things in general. Very lovely, kind comments left on that video and I appreciate it a lot. I know I said in that video that I probably wasn't going to do wrap ups because I was reading a lot slower, but I was going through uh, things and like Obviously it's now the end of December when I'm recording this and I'm like, well, I did read three books in November and I've read three books so far in December. And so a wrap up kind of makes sense right now. <laughs> and it'll also like save me a little bit of time in terms of like recording time. So yeah, we're just gonna do a wrap up. And like I said in previous videos, like I'll make content when I can about what I can and do the best that I can. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. But today we're talking about the books that I read in the month of November. So the first book I have to talk about is Swimming Back to Trout River by Linda Rue Fang. This is a book that I feel like is super, super under the radar. It has like less than 500 reviews, I believe right now on Goodreads. I picked it up super randomly. Like I was in a bookshop in California and just like browsing, trying to figure out what I wanted to get from that bookshop. And I saw this and I read the synopsis and I read like the first couple pages. I was like, yeah, I can vibe with this. So the story mainly takes place in from like the 1960s through like the 1980s, 90s ish. And it takes place both in China as well as in the United States. And one of the big things or themes that happens in this book is the Chinese Cultural Revolution, which I personally don't know a lot about and don't have a lot of experience reading about. There are a couple of different characters that you're following over the course of this book. There is Momo and Cassia who have gotten married and they have a daughter named Juni who is 10 years old when the book starts, I believe in like the 1980s. Her parents have left her behind, I believe with his parents. So her with Junie's grandparents and they both end up coming to the United States but they're estranged while in the United States. And then there's another character named Cassia who really loves classical music. She played the violin, things like that, but during the Cultural Revolution her violin got broken. A lot of the classical music that she studied was burned and just like torn up and gotten rid of and things like that. And so she's struggling with that. And so you are following these different characters as they are kind of just like dealing with the major changes that are happening in their country as well as in their own lives. You see how Momo and Cassia met each other and some of the events that happened earlier in their lives individually as well as what's going on with Junie. This book does jump back and forth in time a little bit and you are just kind of seeing sort of the changes that are happening in China, how it's affecting its citizens and specifically these couple of characters and how that affects their personal lives, their family lives, and things like that. This is one of those books that while I was reading it, it was just so beautiful, so immersive. I'm someone who typically doesn't like books that are told from multiple perspectives or I have a harder time with them, but this one I felt really immersed in and I felt really engaged with the story. I didn't quite know like what was going on or how things were going to lead to other events and things like that. So it kept me fully engaged. Um, the writing itself is really beautiful and really lyrical. Um, there are parts of the story that are just like really tragic and heartbreaking. And also you see the characters kind of like just struggling to figure out what they want to do kind of the way everyone does in the world. But there are these added layers of like major cultural and government overhauls that are happening in their home country that are kind of opening up doors as well as closing other doors and things along those lines. The different characters for the most part seem pretty like separate from each other but you do see how they all interact with each other in various ways and seeing how various choices are made. I will say like I was fully engaged with the story and as I kept going like some of the events that occurred towards the end of the story are really heartbreaking and sad and surprising but it's like still just like a really beautiful book. But it is a book that like now a month later, I'm like, don't have as strong of a connection with. And again, that could just be me. That's not necessarily a knock on the book, but it is, you know, something that like compared to some other books that I've read this year, this one hasn't really stayed with me as much. Um, so take with that what you want. I feel like this is a really enjoyable read though. It's worth picking up. Um, and especially because it is like super under the radar, I do feel like there are a lot of people out there, especially if you like literary fiction, if you like family stories, this is a good one that kind of checks off a couple of those boxes. So yeah, I would recommend this one. Overall, I gave it a four out of five stars because I did really enjoy this story and following these characters and seeing 
sort of how when the world was changing during this time period affected these specific characters. So yeah, overall an enjoyable read for me. The next book that I finished was The Plot by Jean Han Korowitz. So this is a kind of suspenseful contemporary slash literary novel. In the story you are following this character named Jacob who was once like an up-and-coming author. He has first book came out to like a decent amount of publicity. It was, you know, on some like best of lists of the year that it came out and things like that. But after that point, everything has just kind of fizzled for his career. His second book came out, didn't get a lot of good buzz or any interest or anything along those lines. And now he is basically teaching creative writing at this like university. And while he's teaching this creative writing class, he comes across this one student named Evan Parker, who while he's in the class, he's basically like, I have the like perfect novel. I don't really need help with my creative writing. I'm just here to kind of learn how to get an agent, get connections, things like that. Like the book that I have in my head is perfect. It doesn't need any help whatsoever. I know it's going to sell millions of like copies. It's going to get picked up for adaptations. It's going to get picked up for book clubs, all of that stuff. Like I don't need any help really. I'm just here to figure out how to get an agent so I can get this published. And so while he's talking about all this, he also is like refusing to obviously talk about the plot or anything in terms of details. The sample that he provided for the like creative writing application and all of that stuff, like it's good, but like Jacob can't really tell what's going on and things like that. And so during one of their early one-on-one -on -one sessions, Jacob's just like, look, just give me the basics of the plot and things like that. And so I can help you as best as you, I can, then we can like kind of move on from there. And so Evan ends up telling Jacob the plot and Jacob is basically like afterwards, like this is, he's right. Like this story is perfect. This plot is perfect. He is going to write a bestseller and it's going to be amazing. And he's, Jacob is, you know, kind of jealous, obviously. Fast forward about a couple of years and Jacob is still doing these sort of like creative writing teaching sessions and things like that to pay the bills. And every now and then he like kind of checks to see like what's happening with this book, but like it hasn't been published yet. Jacob decides to like kind of look into it a little bit, see what's going on with this. And he finds out that Evan has actually passed away and he actually passed away shortly after that original creative writing class. And so Jacob now realizes that he's probably the only person who knows the plot of this story and so he decides that he's just going to write it himself and then it turns out that you know Evan was correct like this ended up becoming a huge bestseller it gets Jacob like a lot of fame a lot of money things like that and he's just kind of enjoying you know just all of the publicity and things like that when about a year after the book originally published he gets an anonymous note that says like you're a thief and so the story kind of goes from there as Jacob is trying to figure out who sent him this note who else knows about the plot of this book and knows that he stole it and also like trying to deal with like the fact that he has a lot of eyes on him right now and he doesn't know like what's going to happen if the truth comes out so yeah I really enjoyed my experience reading this book there's like uh, two sides to this story like so when I was reading it there was a part of me that was like so intrigued because it, it's not so much that there's something like crazy new or original happening in the story like it's a suspense story but there is was a part of my brain that's just like I just want to know like what's going to happen like who actually does know the truth and how is this all going to play out and is Jacob going to end up like getting revealed as like this huge fake and things along those lines. And so there's parts of this while I was reading it where I was like, yeah, this is this is typically what I would expect from a suspense story like this. There's like this aspect of like guilt and things like that, very like Edgar Allan Poe, where there's like this ticking time bomb and you know, like something's going to happen. So I feel like it keeps pushing the story forward. I do think that there are a lot of really interesting like twists and turns that happen over the course of this story. A lot of this book is following Jacob as he is basically playing an amateur detective almost, trying to figure out who sent him this note, trying to figure out details about like who could potentially have known about this story and have known Evan to know that like this book was originally his idea, stuff like that. But I just like remember like going and going and there was this point where I was like, oh, this is a very interesting turn that this plot ends up taking that I wasn't expecting. And as I got maybe like 80% through this book, I like put the book down and I turned to my husband and I was like, I need to tell you what I think is happening right now. So that way I can see if I'm correct. 
And it turns out I was correct, but that didn't ruin it. That like just enhanced it for me because I was like, wow, this is not what I was expecting for the first like 80%, 90% of this book. And now that I see everything that's been revealed, I was like, holy cow, that's really well done. Like I just found myself really, really enjoying it. Well, like sometimes you just need a book that hooks you and keeps you like engaged and makes you want to keep turning the pages. That's what the plot was for me. And during a time when I was slumping like crazy, this was just so good. It was like the perfect vacation airplane book because I feel like it's a really good hook. And at least for me, I just wanted to keep reading it. I found like the characters really intriguing and I found like just trying to figure out the mystery along with Jacob really fun and stuff like that. So yeah, I feel like if you want something on the lighter side but still suspenseful not light like cozy mystery but light in terms of like there are people dying constantly and there isn't even like really a sense of danger and murder quite like that so like that sort of lightness in your mysteries if you're looking for something like that but keeps you still hooked i feel like the plot is a really good one to check out and the final book that i have to talk about is how to turn into a bird by maria jose ferrada and this was translated by elizabeth Breyer. so this is a book from a Chilean author and I was actually sent this copy from Tin House to be fully transparent but this is just like a really beautiful novella that I was just really taken aback by really surprised by so in this story you are following this boy named Miguel who is around 12 years old and his uncle yes his uncle named Ramon uh, ends up taking this very unusual job where he has to look after this coca-cola billboard in this neighborhood in Santiago Chile and he decides to kind of take things to another level and like move in to the billboard so he like creates this kind of like shanty town type house attached to the billboard so that way he can look after the billboard 24 7. and so everyone in the neighborhood ends up kind of gossiping about ramon and talking about that he's like lost his mind he's gone crazy you know how could he be doing something like that miguel decides to like befriend him basically or like continue to be his friend partially because he's just really curious about the situation partially because he doesn't feel like his uncle has like fully lost his mind the way that Ramon talks it's like not so much that he's lost his mind it's more that he's like seeking freedom and things along those lines but as things continue on um, events occur and people start to turn against Ramon as well as like hysteria just starts to build because of certain events that happen and things like that and you just kind of see sort of like how the story progresses from there again it's pretty short so I'm not going to talk about the plot too much more than that but yeah this is just like a really beautiful story about this like young boy kind of on the precipice of like being a kid but also like being a teenager and almost an adult and things like that and kind of viewing things still from a somewhat childlike perspective and not fully understanding what the adults are doing and what they're talking about all the time and how his eyes sort of start to become open to some of the things that are going on around him but it is also like this really beautiful reflection on life and freedom and the things that are required of us the things that are put upon us by society and kind of like pushing against and questioning some of those things in order to become your true self and things along those lines yeah i don't know i don't want to talk about it too much more than that and i don't know if i really have much more to say than that other than that this was like just really beautiful really just like lovely story about these characters if you're someone who enjoys coming of age stories i feel like that's a good one to pick up i originally was like oh i'll save this for women in translation month and then i never like read anything uh and then <laughs> i was like you know i'm not gonna wait to pick up these books i'm just gonna pick it up and i'm really glad that i did this is definitely worth getting a couple more eyeballs on i feel like and so yeah if you're looking for more books in translation and things like that this one was absolutely fantastic. So yeah, that is everything I have for this video. Like I said, I'm working on, you know, getting back into reading and things like that. I feel like I found a couple of books that have been really jiving with me, which is great and making me get back into the groove of regularly reading. And hopefully that means I'll be getting back into the groove of regularly making videos. I have a couple more that I want to do that are potentially more along the individual book review route but again i'll get there when i get there let me know down in the comments below if you read any of the books that i talked about here today or if you have any questions about anything that i talked about feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well so yeah that's all i have for now and thanks for watching